Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach from electricalexamcoach.com. And today we're gonna answer the question, what is a kitchen according to the NEC? What implications does it have as far as circuitry and also our load calculations and why it's so important? So let me ask you a question. I'm standing kind of in what we might call a kitchenette. And the question is, is this a kitchen? Is this a kitchen or is this a kitchen? That's the exact question that we're gonna answer today. The first thing that I ask myself anytime I'm wiring something is where am I and what am I wiring? If you can answer those two questions, you'll always know where to go in the code. Where am I? Am I in a kitchen? Am I in a bathroom? Am I indoors? Am I outdoors? Is this residential or commercial? And what am I wiring? Are there any specific codes around that dishwasher or around that range that I'm wiring? And that will let me know. And if I can get those two things right, I know that I can get the entire install headed in the right direction. Now, few of us would argue that I am standing in a kitchen right now. We have all of the elements that we typically see in a kitchen. We have a dishwasher, refrigerator, sink, countertop space. We have our range here and we also have our microwave which we of course know now that we have to, if we were wiring this brand new, we have to have our two small appliance branch circuits according to 210.11c. We also have to do our two foot, four foot spacing for our countertop receptacles that we find in 210.52c. And when we're doing our load calculation, we'd have to count 1500 VAs for each circuit that we do pull in this kitchen. But what happens when we get back over in the kitchenette where we started out? Let's head that way. When we get back over here, we see pretty much the exact same elements, don't we? We see our refrigerator, sink, some type of cooking, and our countertop space. So according to the NEC, is this a kitchen? And if it is, are we required to pull two more 20 amp branch circuits or are we allowed to wire it from the other kitchen? Are we going to have to follow the two foot, four foot rule for our receptacle spacing? Or would we follow general wall space spacing if it is not a kitchen? And are we going to have to calculate our 1500 VAs each if we're required to pull those two more circuits? Well, let's go ahead and find that answer now. For the answer to this one, we're gonna to have to head back to article 100. In article 100 is where we find our definition for things like a kitchen. And in the 2020 and the 2023, it reads like this. An area with a sink and permanent provisions for food preparation and cooking. So it has to have those elements in order to be considered a kitchen. And if it doesn't have all of those, it's by definition not a kitchen, and therefore it would not trigger the kitchen codes. Now that we're armed with this new information, we can go ahead and take a look at this area right here. So we have our sink, we have an area to prepare the food, and we also have permanent provisions for cooking. So the question is, what makes it permanent? Well, when it's fixed to the structure, it would be permanent. If it were portable, it would fall under a portable cooking and it would not be permanent, therefore it would not count. So if you were to remove this microwave and this cooktop and you were to just set a counter mounted microwave, in my opinion, that would not be permanent provisions for cooking and therefore this would not be a kitchen by definition. You would not be required to do the two small appliance branch circuits, nor would you have to do your load calculation to suit. But with this being a kitchen, you have to wire this like a full kitchen. And it doesn't matter if it's the second, third, or fourth one in the home, you have to wire this like a full complete kitchen. Now let's answer the question, are we allowed to wire it off the other kitchen? Maybe you wanna save a little bit of money. Can we run a wire from here to there and go ahead and wire these countertops? Let's take a look at the code. Let's take a look at the paraphrase code language. When we get to 210.11c1, this is where the 20 amp rule is laid out. It says, apart from the branch circuits required by other provisions of this section, a minimum of two 20 amp small appliance branch circuits must be supplied for all the receptacles that are listed in 210.52b. Let's take a look at it now. It says receptacle outlets in areas such as kitchens, pantries, breakfast rooms, dining rooms, or similar spaces within a dwelling unit shall be served by the two 20 amp small appliance branch circuits that are mandated in 210.11c1, which are the codes that we just read. 
it requires you to have a minimum of two small appliance branch circuits to serve the wall spaces and the countertops in all of the areas that we just read above. It says they must supply all wall and floor receptacle outlets that are specified in 210.52a. And what that's saying is, is when you're in the kitchen, you're going to also have wall space as well, right? It's not just countertops. When you get to that wall space, you can do your spacing on the 6 foot, 12 foot rule for normal wall space. But they must be served by those two kitchen circuits. It also goes on to say that those two circuits must supply all countertop receptacle outlets as specified in 210.52c, which is where we pick up our 2 foot, 4 foot rule for our receptacle spacing and any receptacle outlets intended for refrigeration equipment. But the sweet spot and the answer to our question comes down at the bottom there in part three. And at the very bottom of part three, it says no small appliance branch circuit shall serve more than one kitchen. Now we know that even though we're in a small kitchen, it's still required to be wired like a big kitchen. For this little space of countertop, this refrigerator, this sink, and these permanent provisions for cooking, we're required to run two more circuits just for serving this area. And they're not just to serve the countertop, they're also to serve the wall spaces in the area that you've got boxed out as the kitchen. And if we were to add other countertops in this area, they must serve those as well. It's also allowed to serve the refrigerator. So it doesn't necessarily have to be dedicated. It can be run off of those circuits, just like we read in the code. But what about for load calculation purposes? Is it adding any load to it? Do we need to add 1,500 VAs more each for each one? Let's find out. For this one, let's look at the paraphrase code language in 210.52a. It says for each dwelling unit, the load must be calculated at 1,500 VAs, volt amps, for each two-wire small plant circuit as specified by 210.11c1. And that's back where we were required to do the minimum of two. So the answer to the question is yes. And that's why I've highlighted that word here. For each small appliance branch circuit in that home, they must be calculated at 1,500 VAs each and added to the full feeder or service load calculation, depending on which one that you're doing. Now, in a big kitchen, we know that we're not just pulling two circuits, although the code would allow it. We're pulling one for the island. We're pulling one for the peninsula. We're pulling two for the countertops. You may be pulling one for another area. Each one of those would have to count as 1,500 VAs. And then in this little kitchen here, you'd also have to add on, if you only pulled two, you'd have to add on another 1,500 VAs each for each of those. Now let's take a look at the picture that I showed you earlier and see if it qualifies as a kitchen. Zoom in here, we find that we do have a couple elements that we need to qualify as a kitchen. We do have our sink and we have our permanent provisions for preparing the food. But what we lack are permanent provisions for cooking. So what we don't have is a kitchen. That means if we were to wire this, we can wire it off of any general circuit and we would be required to follow the six foot, 12 foot rule as laid out in 210.52a for just general wall space. You would not have to pull two kitchen small appliance circuits and you would not have to calculate two more sets of 1500 VAs for your load calculation purposes. Well, that settles it. If it looks like a kitchen and acts like a kitchen, it's probably a kitchen. But remember, it has to have these three things. It has to have a sink and permanent provisions for food preparation and for cooking. I hope that in this video, you learned a little bit more about the NEC and how to apply it when you're out in the field or if you're out inspecting. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and my bargain is that these videos will add value to you, and you will in turn add value to others. Let's get to it.